Hey everyone, this is Mitchell here with a logic tutorial over mastering in Logic Pro 9. Um, before I get into this, check this out. My face, right? Right. I have a new recording program, so you can look at my face now as I talk to you and mumble about things that I pretend to know. Uh huh. So let's get into this. I have an audio track here. And I started with a whole new project. This is what I do for mastering. I, whatever logic song or logic project that I have, that I have the actual song and that I've created, I bounce that as an AIF file of the highest format. And that's going to create a very large song. I'll show you here in the media for this AIF song is going to be 34.7 megs. And an MP3 version of the same song is going to be 4.8 megs. So you're going to want to be bouncing that AIF format song. And you want a very high quality song. That's what this gives you. So I'm just going to be double clicking that. Importing tempo information. And there is your song. Of a very high quality. And close that media tab. And as you can see, these peaks are very close to the top. Very close to clipping. That is not what you want. In the mixing stage, you want those peaks to be very low. Um, this will turn out better for you in the end. I did a terrible job of mixing this. I'm very sorry. But for the sake of this tutorial, it won't matter at all. So once you have your audio file in there, the first thing you're going to want to do is put some equalizer on it. Um, I usually come down here to mastering and start with a rock template. And then, uh, if I remember right, in the song, this was a while ago, um, I had at a thousand hertz, I think, guitars. That, that was the stereo space for the guitars. And then at 2000 was my stereo space for vocals. I believe that's what happened. So um, I'm just going to roll with it. And at 1000 hertz, I'm going to put a little bit of a peak so that I can make those... Um, those guitars pierce through the mix a little bit better so in the end it's a little bit easier to listen to um, so I'm just going to set another peak here at 2000 Hertz and there we go you're going to want to spend a little bit more time on this just so that you can um, just get a better mix um, in the end so that it's easier to listen to uh, your, your, your production stage is where most of the EQ is going to be as you can see, there's just very small little bumps in this line. And that's what you want it to be. You don't want to go over like probably five, four or five decibels away from the center line. That's you, you just don't want to get too crazy with this. But it does help and you're going to need it. So start off with the channel EQ. And then what I do next is, there it is. I put a low cut on it. And I'll low cut it to about... 60 hertz is when I do it. Anything below 60 is just a rumble. And in the final MP3 that you make, that's just something people don't want to be listening to. It's unneeded noise. And so what I do is just cut it off with that low cut program or uh, low cut plugin. And next thing I do is I come in here, and I don't think too many people do this. But um, I put a stereo spread on this. And what this plugin does, I don't know, not too many people use this that I know of, but um, what it does is it takes a mono audio file and it splits it up, the different frequencies, and it makes it stereo. These peaks to the top are going to send it either to the, yep, it's going to send it to the left ear, and the peaks to the bottom are going to send it to the right ear. And these peaks are very high, and you do not want that. You're going to want it more around, oh, I don't know, probably 10, anywhere from 0 to 10% on that. Uh, don't, just don't, don't, don't go too crazy with this. Um, it's fun to mess with, to listen to the song, and then mess with it. The order is really fun to switch up to. Um, so if you want to mess with that, that's, that's a really fun plugin to play with. So there you go. I Channel EQ it, put a low cut on it, spread it out with that program or that plugin, and then we start getting into our compression. 
Uh, this is going to be where you spend a lot of time. I'm going to get into the multipressor. This is going to be the program that you're going to want to use. Um, so let's just get into it. Uh, when you, when I play the song, I'm going to want to loop over a section of the song that is very loud, probably the loudest of the song. And you're going to want to just play it over and over again. And it's going to get very tedious, and it's going to be terrible to listen to. But you're just going to have to bear with me here while I get through this. So there's our song. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down this compression threshold until this line starts bouncing like this one over here. So I'm just going to bring this down. And there it is. There's, it starts bouncing. And you want it, you want it just to be bouncing just a little bit. So at 22 is about right. And so you start at negative 15 decibels and you go to negative 22. So in your gain makeup, you're going to want to bring this one up to 7 decibels so that it's not taking any volume away from that band in the frequency. And you're going to want to do this for every single one. I can just get, go through this quick. You're going to want to spend more time on this than I am right now. Um, 15 is okay right now just because it's already bouncing. I'll bring this one up, or down, sorry. This one, you're going to want to compress a lot just because these high frequencies are very low sometimes. So I'm going to bring this one all the way up to 10. That helps, that helps with the overall sound. Um, definitely, just bringing up that very high frequency. You can hear those cymbals piercing through the mix. And um, as you can see, our mix is is uh what am I trying to say here? Clipping, sorry. It, our mix is clipping. And this is what I get for doing a terrible job in the mixing stage. Because if these peaks were lower, this would not be happening. So right now, if you're in this boat with me with this terrible mixing song or terrible mixing job, um bring it down a little bit until it stops clipping here. And that looks about right. Um, that's going to take a little bit away from the volume, but don't worry. The next plugin is called a limiter, and that. Um, let me explain it to you. A compressor, if you pick a guitar and you record it, there's going to be a very large peak at that pick. What a compression do or compressor does is it rounds off that peak um, a little bit. And what a limiter does is it cuts that peak off at a certain level. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting it to zero decibels. So it's going to be cutting it off right before our audio file clips. And if we play this over and over again, our gain reduction is not doing anything. So what we can do is just bring up this gain. And it's going to get louder, which is what you want in the end. And you want the loudness to be coming right in here between 3 and 5 three and five um, decibels and that's about where you want to be you might want to tweak it a little bit it might be different in different styles of music um, in rock anything over than that anything over that um, when the kick drums hits it compresses the whole mix every single time a kick hits or a snare hits um, that's not what you want when I first started doing this I would always bring the gain up really really high and I would always get a terrible sound in the final thing and all I was trying to do is make it louder and louder and louder because that's what I wanted to get out of this mastering um, that's not what you want to do so be limited with the gain on this limiter if you know what I mean so there you go I have five different um, plugins for you to be utilizing in this mastering process another couple things you might want to be doing is checking your levels with this level meter. Um, there's different kinds. Um, multimeter here. This is, you can watch and see that down here it is cut off completely because of my low cut. It's coming after that low cut in the plugins. So there's going to be little to nothing down here. Um, and then you can see where, where the loudness is and um, it, it just visualize it a little bit more. Um, this is if you have a, a mix that's very left and right stereo oriented 
um, you can look at this and it's just going to be a ball right in the middle just because mine is very mono. It's very right in the middle. Um, but if you have like a portion of the song where there's only singing out of one speaker to one side, that ball is going to, static key ball is going to move to the right or move to the left. Um, and so you can just visualize here what that is. Um, I don't I'm not, I don't even know what I'm showing in this. Um, you don't really need to use that at all. Um, just to see how things are going along in your final mastering mix. So um, there you go. Uh, that I just ran through these very quickly. You're going to want to take a little bit more time on these. And in the end, you're going to want to bounce it as an MP3 song so you can share it with your friends and family and in the future your kids because they're going to want to hear what you did and what you did with your life when you were a teenager. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's dumb. Please comment, rate, subscribe. Thumbs up if you learned something. Uh, yeah, I need to go to sleep. Peace out.